wants to make a short announcement. Yeah, it's, hi. So it's great to see everyone here. I just wanted to make a few statements about what, what the FPUK is, why you're all here, and what you can expect, and what we're doing. I just, you know, in basically in full disclosure. Um, so what is FPUK? Or it's a virtual center that's funded by STFC. Uh, so they gave us, in the last grant round, uh, 60,000 pounds over three years. It's, it goes over one uh, consolidated grant cycle. And it, formally, it's part of the King's Consolidated Grant. Uh, so it's led by an organizing committee of those fine friends and colleagues. And I'm the chair, and that's me in the middle, Neil Lambert. Um, we have a website. It's not high tech. I'm the first to admit that. Uh, it's there. And I also want to point out, of course, that we're not the only STFC virtual center. There are two others. Um, but if you want to know what they do, you'll have to visit uh, their websites or their conferences. So what's our mandate? Like, wh why do we exist? And I think it's, it's one major goal and one sort of assimilated goal uh, is to facilitate interactions between the formal, and I think formal here is going to mean strings and QFT, and I guess it's the formal side of QFT, because apparently there are also some kind of experimental consequences of QFT, uh, but I don't know about those. Um, but, you know, we're here to unify uh, the various UK groups, and also to provide a sort of feedback mechanism to STSC, in terms of, you know, we should think of what we want, and we should tell them, is how I understand it, Nick, is that more or less right? But I want to point out that the UK has, at last count, and this is a rough count, 110 permanent faculty in this regime, uh, and over around 15 institutions. So that's just permanent faculty. That's not postdocs, and that's not students, or various other people passing through. So this is, I think, by anyone's admission, a very impressive spectrum of knowledge and talent that the UK holds. Uh, and it's, I think it's generally felt that we don't talk to each other enough. We don't exploit uh, the fact that we are all here on this island drifting off the coast of the European Union. Um, and so our purpose really is to try to get us all to know each other and to work together and to share this knowledge and to foster interactions. And the main thing is to do events like the one today, or well today, <laughs> this week, uh, really in-person meetings. So we. So we've done two, including this one. We did a, what we called the semi-in-person meeting, which was a really uh, sort of last-minute thing, which we ran on some Saturday last November, when we thought, oh my god, COVID is over. Uh, we better do something uh, to spend the money and to kickstart the thing. Uh, that, was, that was good. We had this one-day meeting at King's. Um, and then what was more that was originally envisioned is meetings like today, this week, excuse me. Uh, and so indeed, here we are at Stringfest at Swansea, uh, enjoying each other's company and hopefully sharing our ideas. Uh, before uh, we could actually hold in-person events, uh, we did do some online events, which you can see, and there are links on the website to the talks that were there. But I want to emphasize that, well, those were success, but, you know, really we're here to try to be in-person facilitating interactions between the groups and sharing our knowledge and making collaborations and, and ultimately good science. We have also provided some funds to other UK meetings. These are relatively small amounts of money, and I've listed the ones that we have funded. Um, although I have to confess that uh, YTF, formerly known as Young Theorists Forum, uh, we contributed a whole zero to because uh, we were mainly funding travel, and they were shut down by uh, Omicron and went fully online, and hence didn't need any money from us anyway. Uh, we're planning more for the one last remaining year that of this initial grant round, so please watch out for what's going on. We have bid for renewal in the next grant round, so I don't know what will happen there, um, but let's keep our fingers crossed. And, you know, we, our mandate is to foster the community, so if you have any suggestions about how you think we should do that, we would be happy to listen. Um, and I ought to also mention one thing I should say earlier about feeding back to the community. So one of the tasks and I have is on, it's on Friday, I'm supposed to attend a meeting to decide who should be speaking at the Durham Annual Christmas Meeting. I don't know if anyone knows or doesn't know about the Durham Annual Christmas Meeting, but STFC through Durham runs, is it STFC funded? Uh, runs a, an annual theorists meeting up in Durham, sort of the last thing before Christmas. Uh, 
And one of the mandates we might have is, for example, is to contribute what, what we as theorists would like to see, what we think should be seen at the Christmas meeting. So if you have any ideas for speakers, uh, please let us know, and uh, I can try to feed that back at the meeting on Friday. So that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I hope we can enjoy ourselves. And of course, if I don't get another chance, I wanted to formally thank Prem and Carlos for doing all the uh, groundwork and organization of this meeting, which so far I think has been really fantastic. So with all that, I think it's time for gongs. No. Carlos, you're the timekeeper. Okay. Okay, first speaker is Enrico. Enrico. Thank you. Hi, everybody. I'm Enrico Andriolo, and I'm based in Queen Mary University, uh, where I'm finishing my PhD under supervision of Dr. Costantinos Papayorgakis, who's going to be here giving a talk tomorrow. And uh, I'm here to present some uh, upcoming work done in collaboration with uh, these amazing collaborators, Ellie Pomoni and her crew, the PhD, Be uh, Hanno Bertle, and uh, the postdoc, uh, Xinyu Zhang. And Professor and uh, Professor Constantinos Zupos. So, which is our long-term uh, goal is uh, more or less exploring the integrability structure that might be present for in four-dimensional and equal to superconformal field theories. Well, how to tackle such an ambitious goal? And uh, as you know, integrability can be seen as like uh, the uh, byproduct of uh, uh, the presence of some uh, hidden underlying uh, uh, symmetries. And uh, so we wanted to move the first baby steps in this direction for these uh, theories. And uh, yeah, so uh, the upshot is that uh, there are some overlooked, uh, uh, so far overlooked symmetries underlying these uh, theories. And if you want uh, to know more about it and how they are implemented, please check, uh, check it over, come over and uh, ask questions. Thank you. Just for context, the, the posters for these accompanying the presentations will be up tomorrow downstairs. Okay, uh, hello uh, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Andy and I work on uh, black hole microstate counting in, uh, in seven dimension. Um, it's based on joint work with uh, Rishi and Nick. And Rishi is also giving a Gongshu talk as well. So there will be two posters on, on the same paper. And um, yeah, so uh, Nick, Rishi, and I proposed a, uh, a duality between a seven dimensional black hole and a finite dimensional quantum mechanical system um, living on the moduli space of Yang Mu instantons. And So uh, please come to my poster for uh, more information. Thank you. Uh, Daniele? Daniele Farotti? Oh, yeah. oh sorry. Which one? Hello, uh, my name is Daniele Farotti. I'm a PhD student at the University of Surrey under the supervision of Jan Gutowski. So uh, my PhD research has been focused on the classification of supersymmetric solutions, so supergravity theories, using spinoral geometry techniques. So supersymmetric solutions solve both the equations of motions and the killing spinor equations of a supergravity background. And basically, supersymmetry imposes constraints on the geometry of space-time. And so supersymmetric solutions are particularly interesting from a geometric perspective. And a powerful tool to solve the uh, killing spinor equations is the spinorial geometry method, uh, which is based on the use of uh, the gauge covariance of the killing spinor equations, together with a representation of the Clifford algebra in an appropriate oscillator basis 
acting on spinors, which are thought of as differential forms. And yeah, so thank you. Mritunje <laughs> Varma. Yeah. Is that for me too? So hello everyone, I'm Tunja Varma, from, I'm postdoc in uh, Southampton. So this work is about using uh, momentum representation of conformal field theories to, to obtain uh, massive amplitudes in flat space by taking the flat limit of ADS. So this work is in collaboration with Costas, who is present here, and Rafaele Marotta, who is in INF and Naples. So in the first step of the work, we study the uh, CFT correlation functions, um, uh, which are spinning and which are non-conserved. So these are needed to analyze the uh, massive states in ADS. And in the second part, we take the flat limit of uh, these correlators to obtain the uh, massive state amplitudes uh, in momentum representation, directly in momentum representation in flat, uh, flat space. So uh, the theory which we consider in ADS involves uh, uh, interacting uh, gauge and massive spin one fields. So they have uh, the gyromagnetic coupling and we also include high derivative interactions in our uh, theory. So our analysis gives a way to study gyromagnetic ratio in flat space uh, from the perspective of ADS CFT. And uh, we also uh, show how uh, this hard, I mean, uh, flat limit for high derivative interactions works. So uh, you are welcome to come and see the poster and have a discussion. Thank you. So many thanks to the organizers for setting up this very nice workshop. I'm a postdoc at the University of Edinburgh and uh, uh, for the next uh, two days you can find my poster around uh, which describes work with uh, Yanis Papadimitriou. So our work is about a powerful method uh, to analyze the thermodynamics of black holes in ADS but even more general but without having an explicit solution. Uh, so the main character in this approach is the so-called effective sphere potential uh, which you can think of very closely related to an entropy function, namely a function that reproduces the entropy after you extremize it. Uh, and it can be also thought of as a, as a generalization of various entropy extremizations in the literature, like sense extremization principle, or uh, the ones about complex BPS solutions, as Samir and his friends suggested a few years ago. So this method is completely general, can be applied to various setups and various uh, numbers of dimensions. We applied it to black hole, BPS black holes in ADS-5, which had also the technical challenge that necessarily these black holes are, uh, are rotating. Uh, so I hope I can discuss the details of all of this in the next few days in the poster. Thank you. Ellie? No. Uh, the, the Sorry. One. This one. The, the yeah, Yasaman right. yes, Yazdi. Yes. Uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, my name is Yasaman Yazdi, and I'm a research fellow at Imperial. I work on the causal set theory approach to quantum gravity, and my research focuses on two different topics. One is entanglement entropy in various different settings and for various different theories. And the other main topic that I work on is a cosmological model called ever-present lambda, in which the cosmological constant fluctuates due to space-time discreteness. I don't have a poster, but if any of these things interest you, please do come and talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. Eli Hayes. Yes. Yes. 
Okay, hi everyone, my name is Ellie and I'm a PhD student at City University in London. Uh, my supervisor is Professor Yang Hui Hu. And the kind of work that I do in my PhD is applying data science and machine learning techniques to all sorts of different objects in string theory. So what I've done so far has been pretty broad. I've done some stuff on Clavier manifolds, now on G2 manifolds, uh, also some things on BPS spectra and wall crossing. Uh, but the post that I've created today is on a particular project where we applied a Siamese neural network to determine whether or not two brain web diagrams are equivalent or not. And equivalent in this situation means that the brain web describes the same five-dimensional superconformal field theory. Uh, so if they are equivalent, then they're going to be mapped close together in, in embedding space, and if they're inequivalent, they're mapped far apart. So if you want to find out more about this, then I've got a poster, so come find me. And also, if you have any other ideas about like machine learning in your area of research, I'd love to hear. So thank you very much. Ed Hurst. Perfect. Uh, hello, everybody. So um, for those I haven't met yet already, my name is Ed. And sorry for the repetition, I'm also a PhD student at City University, also with Yang. Um, so, but however, in the new year, I'm going to be moving to Queen Mary to work with David Bevan as well with the postdoc. Uh, so, so far, throughout the PhD, I've had the chance to work on a good number of projects, and a section of these are, I've shown a snapshot of at the bottom, and the core theme behind these is the use of these data science and machine learning statistics to analyze these big data of mathematical objects which we can create analytically. Um, and particularly, these sort of techniques are especially relevant because now in a time where computational power is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, and these mathematical programs like Mathematica, Macaulay, Sage, they're developing so quickly, there's suddenly like a lot of availability to generate enormous data sets of the mathematical objects we all know and love. And when we get these big data sets, it's now a perfect time to employ techniques from computational statistics in general to try and find patterns and help guide our intuition for formulating and testing conjectures. Uh, so, as I say, I've picked out a selection of projects that will be on my poster. I'll have a section of results from these. If there are any of these particularly interest you, please do come and talk to me at the poster session. Or otherwise, if you want to talk about how ML uh, could be useful in general, please do that as well. Thanks very much. Jack Holden. Hello, I'm Jack Holden from the University of Southampton, and this is work I've done under the supervision of Andy O'Bannon and Masanori Hanada. Um, so this is the, the phase diagram for N equals 4 CPM mills, or for ADS5 cross S5. And um, we know that the string gas phase describes the confined phase, and the large, large black hole phase um, describe, uh, maps to the deconfined phase. Um, but there's a question of what the small black hole phase um, corresponds to, and we'd suggest the um, there's a part, um, it maps to the partially confined phase, which is um, described by um, a subgroup of the the gauge group deconfining as shown by the the matrix below. Um, uh, the the transition between the, the partial and the completely deconfined phase um, has a gross width and voidure um, character, which is um, it's a statement about the um, distribution of the holonomies of the, uh, the eigenvalues of the holonomies of the gauge group. Um, but the cleanest way to describe a transition is always in terms of global symmetries, which the gross written wadia transition doesn't offer. Um, so um, we looked at um, different field theories that we know has this phase structure and the partially confined phase and wanted to see if we could find um, a global symmetry breaking description for this um, point in green. Um, so we found in, in the large um, NUN um, Yang Mills case, you have this case um, in which um, the green point can be described by chiral symmetry breaking. 
Um, and there's also a, a much more interesting case using um, CP breaking that you have to look at my poster for. And um, this is um, to be relevant to people who are interested in QCD in um, gauge gravity duality mapping of degrees of freedom and also the um, crossover in um, cosmology. Thank you. Mario Ramos Hamoud. Okay. Hi, everyone. Thanks to the organizers for the opportunity to present my work today. I'm Mario, a first-year PhD student at the University of Cambridge, working under the supervision of Professor, Professor Fernando Quevedo. So this prelim preliminary results is part of an ongoing research in collaboration with him and Professor Cliff Burgess. So in the context of type 2B string theory compactifications and considering that closed string moduli can lead to exotic stars, we have studied some of their properties. And to do that, we have uh, computed the spherically symmetric solutions to the Einstein equations, which allow us to compute the modified Bunch-Dolls limit, which is a upper bound on the mass to size ratio of these kind of stars. And interestingly, uh, we found that this uh, ratio is larger in the presence of these exotic particles in contrast with the general relativity case. So, if experimentally one finds uh, larger ratios, uh, this might give rise to consider the presence of exotic particles and particularly of action and dilatons. So if you want to know more about these exotic things, I hope to see you tomorrow during the poster sessions and after tomorrow. So thank you. Neil Talvar. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Neil from Swansea University. Um, so some recent work uh, around 2019 showed that um, to calculate the entropy of Hawking radiation, we should use the so-called island formula. Uh, and if we use this formula, then we get the, the page curve, um, which is what we expect the entropy of the radiation to do uh, if black hole evaporation is to be consistent with unitarity. Um, so in my poster, I talk about some work where instead of just looking at the page curve, um, I like the entropy of all the radiation, we look at the entropies for subsets of the radiation. Um, and we're able to match our results with a random unitary model for an evaporating black hole, which is shown here. And we also find an important role played by thermodynamic irreversibility. Um, so perhaps a familiar role of irreversibility is that it's responsible for um, is responsible for bring, bringing forth the page time. So the page time actually occurs well before the black hole's lost, lost half its entropy. Uh, and this is uh, its irreversibility which is responsible for this. And similarly, we find an important role played by irreversibility in our analysis. Um, so for more details, please come see the poster. Thanks. Arpit Das. Hello, I'm Arpit from Durham, and I'll be presenting a poster on a work done with my supervisors, Nabil and Ruth. And Nabil will be giving a similar talk tomorrow, so do tune into that. So here, uh, I'll be talking about higher form symmetries, chiral magnetohydrodynamics, and holography. So the weakly coupled physics of this system is described by that action over here, which is just uh, massless Dirac fermion coupled to dynamical ENM. So classically, uh, that system has the U1 vector symmetry and the U1 axial symmetry, but at a quantum level, we know that the vector symmetry is gauged away and the axial symmetry is broken due to the APJ anomaly, which essentially means that the anomaly equation over there, the right hand side is a dynamical operator now, and so it's really non-conserved. But however, it also has a U1 one-form symmetry, which is related to the fact that the magnetic flux or the field lines are conserved. And so if we define a two-form current, which is the Hodge dual of the field strength, then by Bianchi identity, it is identically conserved. 
so th uh, so that's a uh, one form symmetry in uh, enm and the idea is to c come up with a holographic model which describes these symmetries so what we did was we we'll try to look for the dual bulk fields so there will be a two form gauge fields which i call b2 dual to the two form current and e1 vector field which is dual to the axial current but since the axial current is not conserved this uh, vector field will not enjoy any gauge invariance and with that we we wrote down the general uh, bulk action which is the s5 over there and then we uh, did some interesting um, calculations of some observables and if you want to know more about that you are welcome to come to my poster and i'll be more than happy to discuss and thank you rishi rishi molan Hello, so I'm Rishi, I'm a postdoc in Cambridge. Uh, in this work uh, with Andy and Nick Dory, uh, our focus is to provide evidence of a particular holographic duality. Uh, this is between, on one hand, a superconformal quantum mechanics on the moduli space of yang mills instantons. On the other hand, M-theory on a particular background. Now, on the quantum mechanics side, our focus really is on the superconformal index. Uh, Samir taught us earlier that by looking at the coefficients of this index, we can learn about the degeneracy of BPS states in the quantum mechanics. Uh, conversely, on the gravity side, we exhibit a class of supersymmetric black hole solutions and compute their thermodynamics, including their entropy. We then go to a regime of this duality where we can actually trust the supergravity in the bulk. Uh, we find that in this regime, the uh, uh, degeneracy of states uh, grows exponentially. And in particular, we're able to match this exponential growth exactly on the nose with the beckenstein hawking entropy of these black holes. This is, to our knowledge, the first example of such a match in a finite dimensional quantum system. Um, if you want to uh, correct me on that or learn about anything else in this picture, please come see my poster. Please do also see Andy's poster, which focuses more on the index side and the index asymptotics. Um, yeah, thanks very much. Vidisha Chakraborty. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Vidisha Chakraborty. So first I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to present my work here. So I'm a postdoc at University of Southampton and the title of my poster is uh, Shockwaves in Black Hole Microstate Geometries. This is a work done in collaboration with Sami Ravash who is a student at the Southampton University and David Darton. And uh, so the main results uh, of the poster is uh, we construct the first family of asymptotically flat supersymmetric three charge black hole microstate geometries that ca contain shock waves at their core regions. And uh, this geometries in the decoupling limit has a ADS three times S3 region. So using ADS CFT duality, we have identified the holographically dual states in the D1D5 CFT of these geometries. And uh, also these geometries are actually smooth except for the physical singularity at the location of the shock wave. And uh, these geometries are actually a coarse grain description of the back reaction of some massless particles with very high energy. So actually in supergravity, we cannot actually uh, resolve the details of the, uh, the uh, shock wave, but uh, we, can, uh, we know the total energy of the system. And uh, also we have uh, uh, studied uh, the effect of scrambling in microstate geometries containing shock waves within uh, supergravity. So uh, please come and have a look at my poster if you are interested. Uh, thank you. Veronica Pasquarella. Hello everyone, I'm Veronica. I'm a second year PhD student working with Professor Kavido Abdamt. So um, our first aim was the one of understanding the stability of vacua in string theory landscape. And so I started addressing this stability in two dimensions, and I found that in three different methods, uh, there are three different results. The Euclidean methods of brown Teitelbaum and kolman Lucha lead to having uh, a total action describing the transition, which is uh, like the difference of two generalized entropies, but without the emergence of any island. On the other hand, by uh, applying the method of Fischler, Morgan, and Puchiski, which is Hamiltonian and in Lorentzian signature, I get a difference of generalized entropies, 
uh, which can account for the emergence of an island. So the first case would be an, an example of wedge holography, where ADS-2 CFT1 can be embedded in ADS-3 CFT2. And on the other hand, uh, when the island emerges, this is no longer true. So it means that there are additional degrees of freedom that can be taken into account and that can restore uh, unitarity once we take the flat uh, limit of uh, the space times involved. Uh, so this proves that there's a correspondence in between the stability of the vacuum and um, the information loss paradox. And I also found correspondence between these results and the algebra of observables uh, um, recently developed by Witten uh, for, the inf for addressing the information paradox. And I'm currently working on non-invertible symmetries and their relations uh, to these results that are obtained up to now. So if you're interested in any of these topics, uh, please come along and thank you for your attention. Okay, great. We end on time. Uh, before time, yeah. So let's thank our younger colleagues again. So we'll have all the posters put up tomorrow morning if you bring them along. We'll have pins and poster boards downstairs. I think that brings today's session to a close. Thanks, everyone. Ah, yes. Uh, I'd probably maybe prepare something with uh, directions and stuff. But indeed, tomorrow is a conference dinner at 7 a.m. Uh, the restaurant 7 is 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long day. So the restaurant is Adelina's. It's about a 10-minute walk from the campus to the east of the campus. Yeah. And by the way, there are things that we probably didn't say in our emails to you. There's a very nice pub right next to the campus. It's called Pub in the Pond. There are swans. You can feed them. Uh, you can also drink beer, and you can get some food as well. Yeah. And there's, there, by the way, in case you're tired of the food that's served here, uh, there, are, uh, there are a couple of eating joints uh, in Fulton House. There's burritos and uh, Greg's. <laughs> Sorry, so, so, yeah. You can if you wish. Uh, people will be hanging around. Yeah. Yeah, and it's not a discussion. I mean, it's to, to put them on. Yeah, you can. You can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, thanks.